So good morning, dear sir. See, coronavirus is uh, certainly important lessons for all of us. If you see the way the life is going in the last uh, 15, 20 years, and more so after the technological boom has come, the human society was going on, on, and on. Human society was the only homo sapiens, the humans are the only animals, a creature that wanted to survive and grow. The jungles were cut, the forest was destroyed, the mountains were made naked, and each and everywhere you see the concretization, the mechanization. You see the natural body reserves, body resources, the animal habitats, everything was under constant threat. In the last past 10 years or so, you see the viral infections are coming gradually and gradually in a big way, challenging and uh, <coughs> undermining a large part of the human society. So I think uh, somewhere we have, as humans, we have to understand that there's a need of a co-inhabitants. For example, uh, if you see the Vedas in our country, you see the, the worships, the hymens of the Vedas. They worship the hum- sky, they worship the earth, they worship the water, they worship the fire, they worship the air. They worship the plants, they worship the animals, they worship the trees. So, the rishis of sages of the Vedas realize the importance of the co inhabitants of the entire nature. Man cannot exist as a single entity. That is very, very important. But somehow, In the last 15-20 years, this message has been lost thanks to the westernization, or you can say Americanization, where the human greed, the human mind greed, which wants more and more, the bigger and bigger, the taller and the taller, control and the more control, is kept on expanding the desires of the common man. So I think uh, the most important lesson in my feeling is, my thoughts is, that somewhere you have to draw a line, somewhere a balance has to be drawn. Second important lesson is, in many countries on this planet, the governments ignore the public health infrastructure. They ignored the public health services. They thought allowing the private sector, which means the business corporate sector of medicine, giving them huge lands, the subsidies, the tax concessions, the risk discounts, and other kind of the benefits, and encourage them to make huge corporate hospitals where the technology the super specialists that tend to rule and the common ailments taken care by the simple practitioner, a family physician has absolutely no role in those hospitals. So every doctor who takes a training in modern medicine in any medical college in India and uh, abroad he understands, he understands very well that being a GP, being a general practitioner, being a family physician, your earnings, your status is very low on the ladder. And if you have to increase your earnings, if you have to move up the ladder, what is important is to do specialization, and not only specialization, you have to do super specialization and super super specialization. 
So you have to be among the few in the zone, among the few in your city. So all those patients who need specialized services have to get to you and it helps you to boost your image, the status in the society and the monthly earnings of that particular super super specialist. So down the ladder, people who are simple medical graduates in our country or MBBS doctors who should be the backbone of the, our health infrastructure, they become gradually the weak link of the entire system. So you have a drop of the pyramid which is very very heavy as of the heavy investment is concerned, heavy technology is concerned, the heavy education is concerned, the cost of the treatment is concerned and the base is full of people who are not satisfied, who feel humiliated, who have to work very hard and who find it difficult to have run their families, run their homes because the job is tiring and the job is not lucrative and the job is less paid and nobody is willing to hire them. Those corporate hospitals have absolutely no place for those general physicians or the family physicians. So the family mental health, the family physical health, comprehensive health taken care of a family physician has been ignored in many countries including our own country. If you see the investment of United Kingdom, you see the investments of the Indian state into the public health, into the health structure has been going down and down with each year. The percent of the GDP is going down and down every year. In places like United States of America, the expenditure is in private sector, which is not in the public health domain. It is more so in the specialization and the super specialization in those hospitals in America. So what is happening is the public health, which take care of the comprehensive health of a society, comprehensive health of the community, the comprehensive of the state, the roots of that public health become very weak. There is no reason you find the thousands of the street dogs on the roads and have full liberty to bite lakhs of our citizens every year who have to be vaccinated heavily with their own complications and the side effects. There is no reason the street animals should be found on the national roads, middle of the city roads. There's no reason. There's no reason to have heavily loaded slums where it is difficult to breathe. You don't have a proper air. You don't have a sanitation. You don't have a water supply. You don't have the basic amenities of the life. And dozens of workers, the migrants from the remote part of the different states come to the mega cities, the so-called metros, and try to make a difficult living for working for 12, 18 hours a day. So this is an, another important lesson is you have to have public infrastructure, you have to have public health infrastructure, and the state has to invest heavily. The private sector, the corporate sector, the big business houses, which runs huge hospitals, the chains of the hospital across the different countries, across the world, be it the Malaysia, be it the Singapore, be it America, be it Australia, be it India. They have absolutely no interest in the basic health services. They have no interest in the public health. The public health, where is the heavily subsidized health services has to be the job of the state. You don't expect a hi-fi businessman to open a charity hospital, the charity services. The charity of the subsidized health care, which is affordable health care, 
has to be the domain of the state or the central government. So I think the first lesson is the life has to be balanced. The second lesson is the public health infrastructure has to be strengthened by an army of the trained doctors, trained nurses, trained staff and the physical infrastructure in the name of the health centers, the primary health centers, the tertiary health centers, the sub centers and so on and on. It is very important. The third is, the lesson is, if you see today, the Europe has been affected a lot. People from Italy, Spain, they are bleeding. England has been affected to a great extent. Even their own Prime Minister has been affected by the coronavirus. The Health Minister has been affected by the coronavirus. So what has happened is, the places like UK, the places like United States of America, who has the huge infrastructure as for the super specialty and specialty hospitals are concerned, and the places like France, Germany, Switzerland, Spain, Italy, and so many other places. These governments, they ignored the warning. They misjudged the power of the coronavirus, and I'm not expert of epidemiologist to say, but this is what I hear from the media, the printer, the electronic media, the YouTubes, which comes from the different experts, that these governments, they did not take the sufficient, effective, preventive measures so that the spread of the virus, the onslaught of the virus, the attack of the virus could be blunted. So these countries are paying a heavy price for the indecision, for the lack of vision of the governments. So governments of today, not only to be politically correct, they have to have the sufficient amount of wisdom, sufficient magnitude of the wisdom, which is scientific wisdom, sufficient tempo of the scientific temperament to understand the natural calamities, to understand the pandemics, to understand the epidemics which are going to threaten the human mankind. Today, they're threatening already, are they going to threaten in the coming future? So friends, I end this my talk. I'm your host, Dr. Rajiv Gupta from Manas Hospital Ludhiana. And I thought in the last one month or so, you must have seen so many videos, so many talks, so many discussions. I thought it is important to share my thoughts with you. And I think after listening to my talk, you can share your ideas and put your comments. Thank you very much. Good night.